WorkEngine's PPM application allows organizations to align investments with corporate strategy, optimize the value of project work to the business, as well as respond and adapt to changes in the business environment that affect corporate investments. By forecasting and aligning project work, costs, and resources, organizations can ensure they are maximizing ROI and executing on their most profitable portfolio. Together with WorkEngine's EPM application, PPM WorkEngine gives organizations all the capabilities needed to capture, select, manage, execute, and analyze all work that is crucial to the business. Let's take a closer look at the new PPM application capabilities. The PPM Work Engine application allows you to add work planning capabilities to any list in SharePoint. Whether you want to manage a work schedule on a list of service requests, a list of applications, documents in your document library, or any other SharePoint list, you can simply activate the Work Planner feature to begin planning your work schedule. Let's use Work Engine's Rolled Up Project Center list to demonstrate how you can easily manage, view, and report on cost information using the PPM application. Here we can see a rolled up list of projects within the current SharePoint environment. You will now have the flexibility to build your work plan using multiple methods. One, you can build the work plan from scratch by entering your task, your estimated start date, your estimated finish date, your duration, or you can use the dynamic Gantt chart controls to move the dates forward or backwards or expand or decrease the durations. You can also pre-populate the work plan using pre-built templates or you can also create templates in fragments allowing you to select certain phases or a combination of templates. Let's add some resources to our work plan. If you have already assigned resources via your resource plan, which we will be demonstrating shortly, you will see them in the resource dialog box. If you want to add other resources to the work plan, you can click Add New Resource and search for other resources. Once your resources are in your plan, you can now assign them to a task. Another powerful capability of the Work Planner is the ability to compare your Work Plan resource load to the Resource Capacity Plan. The managers can now see the hours allocated versus the hours committed to ensure all resources are within alignment. Now that we have built the Work Plan assigned resources, you can now publish the task to SharePoint so team members can view and update their status. Once a team member makes a change, you can now click the Update button and review all changes before accepting them back into your work plan. Now let's take a look at the cost management capabilities in the PPM Work Engine Accelerator. Once again, you can add the cost management capability to any list in SharePoint. Whether you want to plan costs for departments, projects, or products, you can simply activate the cost management feature on any list to begin planning your cost. Let's use Work Engine's Rolled Up Project Center list to demonstrate how you can easily manage, view, and report on cost information using the PPM application. Here we can see a rolled up list of projects within the current SharePoint environment. By clicking on the list item and then the cost button in the SharePoint ribbon, you will now be able to manage costs for your project. Notice the tabs across the top, Budget, Resource Plans, Actuals, and Benefits. These are called cost types. With Work Engine, you can have as many cost types as you would like that are relevant to your business. Some other examples of cost types may include revenue, forecasts, baseline, etc. The items you see on the left side of the grid are called cost categories. Cost categories can be broken down into different buckets. Here we see labor, material contracts, and other. We can also add subcategories under a category to add more detail. With Work Engine, you can create your own cost category breakdown structure. Entering cost information is simple. You can either enter in hours for labor cost categories, which would show the total cost based on hours and rate, or you can enter FTEs, which would take into consideration the number of days as well as the rates to give you your overall costs. You can also just enter a flat cost amount in the field if you want to enter a cost for material or any other cost category that does not require calculations such as hardware, software, etc. Once we are done editing our cost plan, we can save the plan. Notice that the budget information in SharePoint has been updated with the total amount of budget we just entered. Now that you have entered your cost information, you may want to analyze your costs against other projects in your portfolio. 
Let's take a look at all active projects by selecting the projects and clicking on the Cost Analyzer button in the SharePoint ribbon. In the top section of the Cost Analyzer, you will see all projects that were selected on the left and all of their costs by period on the right. In the bottom section of the grid, you will see the different cost categories for each project selected. Now you can see all project costs together or you can select projects one by one and see the cost information for each project individually. We can also compare cost types to each other, for example, budget versus forecast. Let's compare the project budget cost type versus the actuals cost type. Now you can see a heat map of all overexpended periods by cost category and by project. Notice that we were overspending on both our developers and DBAs, so we may need to consider making changes in those areas. Now that you have analyzed some of your cost data, let's perform some what-if analysis to help maximize your portfolio. After you select the projects you want to model, you will need to select the type of model you want to use. Let's take a look at the approved budget model. As you can see, the top section shows all of the projects that were selected, as well as a Gantt chart showing the start and finish dates of each project. In the bottom section of the grid, you will see the cost categories and the cost by months. Another powerful feature of the modeler is the ability to create targets. There are many reasons to use targets. We could set a target that showed the outcome of hiring another DBA to determine if that would resolve potential overallocations in our portfolio, or, as you can see in this example, we can create a target that reflects our current budget to see how our proposed and active projects perform against the FY11 budget. By applying the FY11 target, you can now see where your costs are over and under by category and by period. Now you can proceed with some what-if modeling. For example, what if you canceled the Active Directory project? You can already see that you are closer to meeting your budget expectations. Now let's move the Feature Request database out to 2012. Again, you can see that you are getting even closer to meeting your FY11 target. Let's take a look at the resource planning capabilities in the PPM Work Engine application. Once again, you can add the resource planning capability to any list in SharePoint. Whether you want to manage resource plans on departments, applications, documents, or any other SharePoint list, you can simply activate the resource planning feature on any list to begin planning your resources. Let's use Work Engine's Rolled Up Project Center list to demonstrate how you can easily manage, view, and report on resource workload, capacity, and availability using the PPM application. Here we can see a rolled up list of projects within the current SharePoint environment. By clicking on the list item and then the resource planner button in the SharePoint ribbon, you will now be able to manage resources for your project. Let's say you need a project manager, a business analyst, and a trainer for this project. We must first look for candidates. There are several ways in which you can look for resources. You can look for resources that are already in your online or Microsoft project plan. You can look for resources by department. You can look for resources that are on a specific project team. Or you can search for a resource by name, skill, role, or even location. Let's go ahead and search by department. Since we are looking for a project manager, we'll select the project office department. Now, in the lower section of the Resource Planner, you can see all the potential candidates with their availability by period from the Project Office Department. As you look through the resources, you will notice that Fred Northup has the most availability to manage this project. Let's add Fred to the Resource Plan. Now we can either enter in hours or a percentage to reflect our resource need. Let's also assign John Woods as a Business Analyst. But first, we're going to change the display value to represent hours versus a percentage. And then we'll add his hours. For the development resources needed, we must request the resources through the department manager and allow him to assign an available resource. In this case, we will need to add a requirement and then select the role and department in which we need a resource. Once we click Save, an email will be sent to the Software Development Department Manager notifying them of the request for a resource in their queue. As the Software Development Department Manager, 
you can use the Capacity Planner feature to view all of your resources and their commitments. You can also review all requests for resources and staff the appropriate resources for those jobs. Here we can see all the departments we manage. Since there was a request for a resource from the Software Development Department, we're going to click on Software Development and then Edit Resource Plans. In this view, we can see all our resources and what they have been scheduled to work on within this department. One of the nice things you can do in this view as a resource manager is change the resource commitments across multiple projects from this single view. Your changes can also be tracked if required so that negotiations can take place between you and the manager of the work, requiring approvals from both sides prior to being committed. From this view, you will see that you have a resource request waiting in your queue for the Microsoft CRM project. To find a resource that has the right skills and availability, you can simply select the request which has the requirements already listed and click the Match button to find potential candidates and their match percentage. According to the candidates list, Rob Barker looks like the best resource in regards to availability and skill sets based on the manager's needs. Let's go ahead and assign Rob to this requirement for this project. We can then add a note to send back to the manager, letting them know a resource has been assigned and allowing the manager to accept or reject the assignment. Now we're going to identify over allocations and propose new resources where needed to balance out the workload. Once again, you can click on a department to review and then click on resource plans. You can then select how you want to view the data, by month or by time period. We'll select a specific time period. In the top section, you can group your team's work by different categories. In this view, you can see all the work assigned to your team by project. In the lower section, you can see all of your resources with both their workload and capacity. You can also select your resources and view a workload versus availability chart by clicking on the Show Totals Graph button. Here you can see that overall, your software development team is underallocated. You can also drill into individual workload. Here you can see that Brian Johnson is overallocated May through November. Let's go back to the details grid and see if we can find someone else to help share Brian's workload. First, we can now switch the top view to Group by Resource. Now we can see which project is causing Brian's overallocation and we can make changes to his workload directly in the view by clicking on Edit Resource Plan. Now you can see that we are in the resource plan for the Xbox DVD expansion project. Let's select Brian and then click on Match to find the best possible replacement for Brian. Here we can see that Jay Hamlin is 100% match and is probably the better resource that has the developer skills needed and has the needed availability to work on the Xbox DVD expansion project. You can then select J and replace him with Brian. The system will track the new change and it will notify the manager that you have requested a new resource on their project. The manager will need to approve this change in order for it to be committed. Now we can see that Brian Johnson is no longer overallocated. Let's head back to the Project Center list and select both the proposed and active projects. We can then click the modeler in the ribbon and select what we have in the system for our FY11 budget. You can also switch to the Hours view. Once again, you will see a list of selected projects in the upper left and a Gantt chart to the right containing their start and finish dates. Below you will see the different roles and the number of hours committed to those projects. You can also narrow down your view by clicking on an individual project. If you want to see these hours in FTEs, you can switch views in the top left-hand corner. You can now see that I need a minimum of five FTEs to fill the project manager role in this particular portfolio. Similar to the cost plan feature, you will also be able to apply targets such as plan budgets or see what your portfolio would look like should you add additional resources. Let's compare this resource plan against the FY11 budget target. By applying the target, you can now see where we are overallocated on resources by role. You can then start to perform some what-if modeling. For example, what if you canceled the Active Directory project 
and what if you moved the Feature Request Database out to 2012? Now you can quickly see the impact on resource staffing should these what-if scenarios be applied. So as you can see, the Work Engine PPM application gives organizations all the capabilities needed to capture, select, manage, execute, and analyze all work that is crucial to the business while maximizing ROI and ensuring the most profitable portfolio.